preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. Jesus is all the world to me, I want no better friend. I trust him now, I'll trust him when life's fleeting days shall end. Beautiful life with such a friend, beautiful life that has no end. Eternal life, eternal joy, he is my friend. Good evening online viewers, it is a pleasure to be here this evening to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I warmly welcome you back to another Sunday evening service. This evening we'll be looking at the team, the battle is not yours. I repeat, the battle is not yours. So now I encourage you to like and share the page so that others can be blessed by this evening's program. But before I move further, let's all place ourselves in the manner for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you so much for the breath of life. We want to thank you so much for all your blessings. As we come before you, Lord, we ask that you please forgive us from all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As you are about to begin this program, we pray that you will be with every online viewers. I pray that you will pour a special blessing upon them so that they can be drawn closer to you. Continue to watch over us. Continue to have your way in our lives. Take charge and control. Beat back the forces of darkness. In your name I pray. Amen. It is now time for you online viewers to join with our choristers as they lead out in song service. Let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Please join with us as we sing hymn number 286 in our Adventist hymnal. Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see. Wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty. Teach me faith. 
Jesus, I love thee. Hymn number 321. Softly through the gloom When the heart of mercy craves 
Thank you, Choristers, for such a wonderful song service. God's name be praised. At this time, Pastor Samora Bess will now intercede on our behalf. Let's all put ourselves in a manner for prayer. A pleasant good night to all. I do invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Kind and ever loving Father, we come before you this evening in the wonderful name of your Son and our Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you, dear God, for sparing our lives and for giving us this opportunity, dear Lord, to experience yet a next, a next moment where your words can be preached and proclaimed to your people. But dear God, I pray that as we worship you here via this online platform, God, that the words and everything that is said and done here would be a blessing to someone, dear Father. And not only a blessing, dear God, but if there is someone or persons who are viewing, dear God, they would also see the need to give their life to you. Father, in a very special way, I lift the preacher before you. I pray your blessings upon the preacher. I pray, dear God, that as the preacher opens their mouth to speak, dear God, they would be speaking directly from your throne. And Lord, I pray that you would continue to add your blessings upon the hearers of your words. Father, if by chance there are persons who are going through a tough time, I pray that you, dear Father, will come true for them in a mark and special way, and you would demonstrate your mighty power to change their situation. I pray, God, that you would continue to keep us. I pray that your word will continue to be proclaimed and would bless hearts and change lives. And Father, I pray today that through the power that accompanies the preaching of the gospel, which is the Holy Spirit, Lord, that somebody would really and truly consider their ways. And so, dear God, we place this evening's service into your care. And Father, we ask that you would take full charge and control. Bless the viewers once more. Bless everything that is said and done. And may your name, dear God, be glorified, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. The scripture reading this evening is taken from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And it reads, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Good is the reading of God's word. As you meditate on the scripture reading, let's all open our hearts to receive this message in song from Sister Marlene Charles. Emptied and broken, I came back to Unworthy, so scarred from sin, but he did not despair, he started over again, and I bless the day he didn't throw the clay away. just picks 
of those pieces. He does not throw the clay away. Over. Oh, he molds me and makes me into his likeness. He fashions the didn't throw the clay away. A vessel of honor I am today. All because Jesus didn't throw the clay Thank you, Sister Charles, for such a wonderful message in song. Online viewers, I hope that you are blessed. It is now time for the spoken word, and I introduce to you a mighty man of God, a very powerful speaker, and tonight he will speak to us on the topic, The Battle is Not Yours. Yes, the battle is not yours. Online viewers, I present to you Elder Henry Sargent. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, brothers and sisters. It's a wonderful opportunity afforded me uh, to be here this evening to bring you a message of hope and consolation from the Word of God. I am yours truly, Elder Henry Sargent, and I invite you to bow your heads with me as we utter a word of prayer this time. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're going to worship you and praise you in whom we live and move and have our very being. You are the one that made us for your glory, your honor, and your pleasure. Have mercy upon us all as a people. Pardon us for our sins, we pray. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you would bless us with clean hands and renew our right spirit within each of us. Pray that the Holy Spirit would take charge of me in a mark and mighty way here, as well as he would bring conviction of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment to come to hearts and encouragement to hearts at this time. As we listen to a message from your word that will help us to be steady in our relationship with the and ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear Lord, for hearing and answering this prayer. In Jesus' name. So, my dear brothers, sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to speak to us on this subject this, this evening. He that shall come will come and will not tarry. And I trust that many of you share the sentiment that the Lord Jesus Christ is about to come. He's coming again. And he's coming very soon. He that shall come will come and will not tarry. As we see what's going on in our, in our world today, without a shadow of a doubt, we believe that Jesus must come to solve the problem of wickedness in our world today that is heightening at this point. So that he can bring back the original plan he had for the human family and planet Earth. As far as I'm concerned, the signs are so clear that he, he bound to must come. And I would say, even a blind man wearing darkers could see what's happening. And that. Jesus Christ, the solution to the sin problem, the solution to this world's problem, must come. Bong to must come. And so it behooves us to be ready by his grace and stay ready. Let all men be liars and let God be true. God himself through Christ told us, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. And his word has stood the test of time. For so many things that have been prophesied have been fulfilled already. And we have the confidence 
that what has not yet been fulfilled will fulfill for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you have your Bibles with me or probably your gadget with you, let's turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to 5. Paul back there, roughly a thousand years ago, said these words under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Uh, to young Timothy, who was a young pastor, he said, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And how true that is. We are witnessing perilous times right before our eyes. Even here in Grenada, the Alsa Spice. You don't have to go too far. But as we look across the seas, we see those perilous times very glaring in our eyes today. So what next? I say, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. That is so glaring in our world today. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. And that's why fellow human beings can kill other fellow human beings as though they don't have a heart. That's why elder men, even aged men, can disadvantage little infants, girls and boys, sexually. Because the affection, my friends, is unnatural. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent or intemperate. And that's why you find we have so many drug addicts around today, so many alcoholics and all other addicts, my friend. Men shall be fierce. It's easy to just stab another one and kill him or her. When we could reason and make peace, but human beings are no longer tolerant and long-suffering. But the easiest thing is to shove a knife in someone's body and kill him or her. Fierce. Despisers of those that are good. We got traitors. Those who are heady, high-minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And that is evident in greater right or wrong. No, you see what's going on. So many are involved in pleasures. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, not paying attention to God. And that's for, as far as the world is concerned here, those behaviors are taking place, yes. Sometimes church members get caught up as well in that, and we shouldn't, because we should be an example to the world and to one another in holiness, in righteousness, in godliness, and Christ-likeness. And there is a sign for the church here too. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. So there are many who will go to church as well. But there is no power in their Christian experience. It's just ordinarily. Go to church and go home and it's a routine. But all these are signs. That Jesus is coming again. All these are signs. As the Bible shows us. That will take place. In the last days. My friends. Let's go with me to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, reading from verse 26 to 30. This one is very serious now, you know. Luke chapter 17, verses 26 to 30. We are told that as it was in the days of Noe or Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah or Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. 
For the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. If I didn't, if I wasn't so convinced of other signs, my friend, that pertain to the second coming of Jesus Christ, I am seriously convinced that, as Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah and Lot, so shall it be in the day of the coming of the Son of Man. This has caught my attention many years ago. For we also know that during the time of Noah, violence was, was at a peak. The strong didn't regard the life of the weak. The strong would have killed the weak as though it's a fowl or a goat or a sheep. What we see around the world today, even here in Grenada, Karikopiti Matnik. Human lives are not valued by other human beings. But we are also told by the servant of the Lord that men will be possessed by demons going around and going about killing innocent men, women, and children. I say when we see these things, these, these heartbreaking activities, these sad activities, these disturbing activities in our world today, in our nation today, I'm saying that he that shall come will come and will not tarry because he, Jesus himself, said, you are going to see a repetition of the days of Noah and Lot before he returns. Now what we want again? Don't we believe that he is at the door? Human probation is fast closing and Jesus is coming again? Friends, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, the signs are too clear for we to doubt. The signs are too clear, are too clear now for we to be careless. The signs are too clear now, brethren, for we to be indifferent. But we should take our relationship with Jesus very serious. And now watch an insult to God. Watch a stench in the nostril of God as we look at the repetition of the days of Lot. You see, when, when God allows folks to lead us in government who should be giving glory to God, government leaders, they are giving glory to Satan, the enemy of God, and the enemy of the people of God. That they can sit in parliament and make laws to satisfy all the needs of man and man going together, man and man in marriage, and women and women in marriage. Well, I am more convinced when I see this one that Jesus born to must come. Don't you? Don't you believe that? When I see this one, because you see, Sodom and Gomorrah face the fires that reduce them to ashes. And now, government leaders who should set an example for the nation are now setting up themselves with Satan in opposition to a, a holy God. And I know it cannot be too long for him to continue to tolerate that. It cannot be too long for the God of holiness and righteousness to tolerate such behaviors. Don't you believe that? He will surely put it down as he, as he put it down back there during the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, during the days of Lot. And also when the people during the days of Noah wouldn't hear. For the gospel was preached for 120 years, but they would not enter into the ark. They would not accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. But what they did instead, they make mockery. Isn't, isn't it a similar thing happening today? Scoffers. Eh? Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the time is very late. As far as the word of God is concerned, based on the prophecies of the end of time, 
So you'll agree with me that he that shall come will come and will not tarry. I encourage us by his grace to be ready and stay ready, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. The majority of the human race today, if you look at what's going on around the world, they are not bothering with a loving God. They are not bothering with a loving Savior. They are not bothering with a comforting Holy Ghost. But men and women today prefer to take the side of the enemy. Who is not a friend of human beings? But as Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but what? To kill, to steal, and destroy. By praise God, the other part of the text negates the first part in that. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Don't you want that life abundantly? I want it and I give it nothing for it. I value it, I cherish it, and by his grace, I'm going to hold on to it. What's about you? So my friends, I'm saying the signs are clear today. Even those signs that Jesus gave and recorded in, in, the, in the Gospels, like Matthew, Mark and Luke, they are fast fulfilling, my friend. The next thing we look for is the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The question is, are we ready to meet him in peace? Is our heart right with him? Do we have that relationship that he wants us to have with him? Are we surrendered to him? Are we dedicated to him? Are we consecrated to him? Are we committed to him and his service? You see, we look at a while ago that many will go to church, but the Christian life is powerless. Today we are told that the world has gone into the church and the church has gone into the world. Where are you, my brother? Where are you, my sister? Are we in the true church of God representing the character of Christ? Or are we dilly darling in the world? Want to hold the world in one hand and we want to cling on to Jesus on the other hand? But that doesn't work. We cannot serve God and Mammon. It's either Christ alone. Or not at all. You cannot serve two masters, my friends. In Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 25 to 28, look at that. Again, all these things are happening today. There shall be signs in the sun. And in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart filling them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the paws of heaven shall be shaken. With the heat that is taking place around the world today. One, pr one president said, it has moved from global warming to global boiling. Ladies and gentlemen, a loving God is still allowing those things to, get, to catch our attention, to get our attention. Because in his mercy, he will have all of us to be saved and none perish. But those very folks who are leading out in government and are supporting abominable practices are going against the institutions that God set up from Eden. The marriage institution, the Sabbath institution. Yes, where he set the example with Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve. And not even even. Folks, what some people don't realize, 
When we go against the principles of God, when we rebel against God like that, we expect to get blessings. So when I hear talk about global warming and, uh, and solutions to global warming, I laugh at that. I will show you why. Because our abominable and rebellious behaviors incur a cost on us and a cost on this world. So what do you expect? Is, is God is not a joker, you know. But I'm still saying in his mercy and love for sinners, he's allowing certain things to get our attention that we can repent and surrender our lives to Christ and come into his fall of safety, in the ark of safety, before it is too late. For he'll have all men to be saved and none perish. That's the kind of God we saw. John 3.16 is very clear. Any little child could understand that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise the Lord. But men still reject it. And so the big talk about climate change now, as though they have the answer for the world. But I, I want to submit to you this evening that whether you are a, a, a king or a queen or a prince or a princess or a president or a prime minister or a governor general or a minister of government, I want to make it plain here that they don't have the answer to what is taking place in this world now. And how do we know that? The Bible tells us that. The prophet Isaiah shows us that this world would become like a mat in government. Man cannot fix that. And in 2 Peter 3.13, God himself said, Look, I'm going to create new heavens and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Man cannot do that. We need God. We need Jesus. And he that shall come will come. I will not tarry. That's Jesus Christ. And he's going to fix it for us. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. Put your confidence in God. Not in man. Cursed is the man that trusted in man. But blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. What do you say all day? Hallelujah to the Lord. And brothers and sisters. I was reading from Luke 21, 25, and 26. Verse 27 says, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, my brothers and my sisters, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption right nigh. So what we see happening on the wall today, surely showing us and telling us that our redemption is drawing nigh. Do you believe that? Let us be ready by God's grace. Let us stay ready. Let us have it right with God. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, where we need to make amends with one another, let us do it. Where we need to make amends with God, let us do it, my friends. Do not leave any stone unturned because you're not going to heaven by guess. None of us are not going to heaven by guess. God give us the direction about all those who are going to heaven in his word. And God also shows us in his word about those who will not go to heaven. We will not time to go through all that right now. But you read the word and you're going to see. We serve God according to his word. For his word has stood the test of time, my friend. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We can trust God through his word. His word has stood the test of time. And what the Bible shows will come to pass in the end of time. Will come to pass. What will happen in the end of time will happen. And will come to pass, my friends. It behooves you and me to take God serious at his word. My final scripture for this evening is taken from Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 35 to 39. Watch that. I like that. That's an encouragement for us here. From the Apostle Paul to the Hebrew brethren back there. They were getting discouraged back there too. They were going to trials back there. But Paul said to them, and God is saying to us today, through his word, cast not away therefore your confidence, which had great recompense of reward. As you serve the Lord, my brother, as you serve the Lord, my sister, don't cast away your confidence. Because there will be great recompense of reward for you 
If you hold on faithful until the end. If I hold on faithful until the end. If we hold on faithful until the end. For he that shall come, will come, and will not tarry. Verse 36, watch that. For you have need of patience. Yeah, we're going to have need of patience in this time. Because there will be trials coming for you and me. There will be persecutions coming for you and me. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ. Remember that. For you have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. I like that verse 37, brethren. Ladies and gentlemen, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Hallelujah. The Bible said Jesus is coming again, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Nobody can stop his coming. No military power might can stop his com coming. No great government in this world can stop his coming. As a matter of fact, if we go, if we had time to go to Revelation chapter 6, we would see what happens as he's coming. Some of them would run to the rocks and mountains, asking the rocks and mountains to fall upon them and hide them. For the day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Well, let me tell you, who shall stand? Those who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Those who have been covered with his robe of righteousness. And those who have prepared and are sealed by the Holy Spirit, they will stand. Now, where are you in this matter? Where are you in this regard? Let's think about that seriously. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Praise the Lord. Now watch that. You have to watch that though. Now the just shall live by faith. This is a time, church, as we see what is happening in our world today. We have to trust God by faith. God's children will have to learn to live by faith. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. You hear what God said? If any man draw back, his soul shall have no pleasure in them. So let us press forward like the Apostle Paul, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth unto those things that are before. We now press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen, somebody? But we are, we are not of them who draw back. I like that scripture. Verse 39 of chapter 10, Hebrews. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition or destruction. But of them that believe to the saving of his soul. Do you believe to the saving of your soul, brethren? I said God can be trusted. God can be relied upon. God can be depended upon. Let us trust him, my friends. Let us hold on. For he that shall come will come and will not tarry. The day of judgment is fast approaching, my friends. And let me tell you something. There will be no excuse when the human race stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We might be able to dodge the policemen today. We might be able to dodge, dodge magistrates and lawyers. We might be able to dodge the pastor, the elders, or whoever. We might be able to dodge our husbands, our wives, or our children. We might be able to dodge some human being from some wrong thing we have done. But we better have it right by the grace of God because there will be no excuse when we all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And I'm sure you will, you will share my sentiment. It's very important that we have it right with God. And we keep it right by his grace. I'd like to encourage us to be faithful and true to him until the end. For he that shall come will come and will not tarry. I think we are living on borrowed time now if we look at what is happening in our world today, brethren, ladies and gentlemen. The only solution to this world problem right now is the second coming of Jesus Christ. But let us be ready and stay ready, brothers and sisters. Let us be strong in the might and power of the Holy Spirit. And let us do all that we can do to help our soul to get to Jesus and encourage our soul in Jesus. But the hour is fast approaching. When he'll return, when he'll come to take his faithful children home to heaven for that grand thousand years vacation, what a time that will be. Some of us never travel overseas yet. But we, that will be more than traveling overseas to leave planet Earth and get to heaven with Jesus and the saints and all the holy angels. Today, I ask you if it's your, if it's your desire to be faithful and true until the end. Lift your hand, let Jesus see you at the same wherever you may be. 
so that he will give you the strength, the courage, and all you equipping to be ready and to stay ready. I invite you at this time to bow your head with me as we pray. We thank you for your word, dear Lord. Grant that your word will find love in our hearts. And we all will bring forth fruit. Meet for repentance. Help us to take our relationship with you very serious, O Lord. For the time is at hand that he that shall come will come and will not tarry. So when he comes, we shouldn't be found wanting, O Lord. But we should be found in a state of readiness to go with Jesus to heaven for that grand town of vacation. And after back to the earth made new, when you will bring back the original plan you had for the human family and planet earth. O Lord, in the meantime, help us to keep faithful and true to you until the end. And to do your bidding, help us to be involved in evangelism and in pointing men and women, boys and girls to Christ. The solution to this world's problem. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Let everybody say, Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Elder Sergeant, for such a powerful message from God. In God's name be praised. Online viewers, I encourage you to share whatever you have learned here this evening so that others can be blessed and be drawn closer to God. Before I leave, I would like to share some announcements with you. Join our prayer intercessors tomorrow night and Thursday night at 8 p.m. and also on Sabbath at 6 a.m. for an hour of prayer. Zoom ID 874-9040-9613. Passcode 013-8003. Using the same ID and passcode, you can join the prayer intercessors between 12 noon to 1 p.m. on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Remember Pastor's Corner at 11.30 a.m. on Tuesday and a rebroadcast at 8.30 p.m. Youth Live Unplug at 7 p.m. and our Sabbath morning service at 9 a.m. followed by our sabbath evening service at 4 p.m. and join us next sunday at 7 p.m. as we continue our sunday evening service let us pray dear heavenly father lord jesus we want to thank you so much for this powerful message that you have given our elder here to present to us we pray that you will help us to always remember to trust in you and depend on you and let us remember that the battle is not ours but it's yours lord so help us to always rely on you and always put our trust in you take charge and control continue to cover us with your blood continue to provide and i pray that you will help us to keep our eyes focused on you be with us as we go through the rest of the week take charge and control in your name i pray amen have a wonderful week ahead everyone and may god bless you We are to find So where you lead me I will go Touch my lips By your strength I will go I will go In all the nations, in all the world